Hey everybody, this is Amazing Fantasy Football. I am Josh, and over there is the Chris Cyborg to, <laughs> Cyborg to my ro robot man, Chris. I like that one. I don't know a robot man though. Is that a DC thing? It is Doom Patrol because I've been watching Doom Patrol oh, on yeah. HBO Max. Yeah. It is, dude. You should check it out if you haven't been watching it. I mean, it's already. I think the show's done three seasons. So far, I'm like halfway, maybe a whole, over halfway through the season one. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it, it's it's good. It's good. It's bizarre because that's yep. what Doom Patrol I can, is. I can tell that from and the outside looking on, in. Yeah, it's it is bizarre. And it's based on Grant Morrison's run in Doom Patrol too, the comic that is, and of course, it's Grant Morrison. So it is bananas, bananas. I've heard great things about Brendan 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 Fraser's performance. Uh, beyond that, I did uh, a good job. I'll be keeping HBO for some time because there's enough other stuff on there too. Oh, excuse me. But the uh, uh, two, two shows I'm you know it's, two shows you know it's king on you, you know it's king on HBO, The Wire, dude. How old is that show? Uh, it started in early two thousands, and it's done right. It's like a, ten seasons or so. Five. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. No, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard it good is, things. dude. It is very quickly one of my favorite shows of all time yeah and i'm not even did. done with it i actually did it is oh really it is amazing it is uh, so i'll probably great. check that out maybe even before doom patrol because i have two other shows lined up that i haven't even started yet because they're just got released or are about to be released as you mentioned earlier today uh gosh i just oh the boys on a uh, prime yep that's and next week i know uh but i'm just saying i'm not I'm going to be starting that show when I get back from vacation. And the other show is Stranger Things. Season four just came out. Yeah, whatever. It's awesome. Well, I don't know if it's season four is awesome, but I love Stranger Things. Pretty lackluster show, actually, after season one. But okay. Anyways, uh, let's move along to we are talking some fantasy football. And we are here to talk about some situ one situation, potentially a second one as well. From every team in the NFL going forward. And we're doing this show because this is our last show until probably somewhere in July. So I I had the idea of, you know, here's let's send off our viewers slash listeners to something, uh, you know, something to think about. You know, something I'm going to think about, something Chris is going to be thinking about from every single team in the NFL. Over the summer, you know, OTAs, uh, mini camps, stuff like that, you stuff, know, stuff to keep first, an eye on yep. in the, uh, in the rest of the off season. Yes. And, and some of it might be a little like not directly correlated with fantasy football as far as no, like not necessarily. Offense, yeah. offensive line or like defensive improvements or lack of improvements or whatever. Yeah, right. But, <laughs> but. We got some news to talk about. We got a few news items. One big one. Uh, Davis and da Davis. David and Joku uh, got a four-year, a $56.75 million contract from the Browns. Before you say anything, Chris, I gotta, I'm got i going to give him my two cents real quick. I think this is a bit of a head-scratcher. He hasn't done a lot in his NFL career. I mean, he was a, he was one of those, like... Side size speeds, you know, tight end specimens. But other than that, like he's been kind of meh. to the point where the Browns brought on an Austin Hooper because David and Joku was kind of uh, why spend the money on him? What, what do you think, Chris? I think it's a it's a run blocking investment. I think they're one of the best run teams in the entire NFL. And I think Njoku has a little bit. I say a little bit has something to do with that. I mean, he's not a, literally an offensive tackle or a guard pulling out or what, what have you, but mm -hmm. uh, you said it when you said size speed specimen, uh, he's been there. What it feels like three, four years. And five. I, th I think he, uh, yeah, I think they just, they, 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 they did, did the franchise tag to keep him there. They're like, we don't have the time to work out the contract right now. We're busy with the draft, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just, it's run blocking, man. That's why he's there. He's a better blocker than, uh, I'm sorry, you said Hayden Hurst? I always get two guys confused. I said Austin Hooper. Austin Hooper. I always get those two confused. My apologies. Uh, Austin Hooper, probably the better receiver. Uh, but from a fantasy lens, I can speak for most fantasy folks. Uh, we expected more. We expected more. 
And, and I don't think, I don't think we're ever going to get it. Here's the one thing that I really don't like about uh, David and Joku. Four touchdowns. He scored four touchdowns in three of his five seasons. That's it. That's, that's it. it. That's his ceiling. Yeah, that's so far. So far ceiling. in his career, four touchdowns. Now, some of that was Baker Mayfield. Some of that was um, whoever was there before Baker. Oh, wow. Oh, I, I mean, I don't remember. I don't honestly. even. Johnny Menzel. Uh, yeah, I think so. Same. Maybe, class, maybe a little bit. The no. Draft class. Um, okay. No. 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 They weren't the same draft class because Johnny Manziel was a first round pick and Baker was a uh, first overall. No, yeah. no, no. Johnny Manziel and uh, and Joku. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. N- I don't remember. N- no. Okay. But anyways, still, regardless, four touchdowns. Like, dude, like his what, best, his best. His what? his best uh his best was his sophomore year, which was fifty six receptions, six hundred and thirty nine yards, and those aff- aforementioned four touchdowns that's too. Good, like, yeah. that's not a good stat line. Like, and it, then that was it's that was fine for a second year. That was but almost it just four years ago. It you didn't know, go up. Yeah, it's fine three for a second year guy, that. but it didn't go up from there. Um, and and I don't think Watson there, actually, is a terribly a terribly tight end friendly QB. Um, yes and no, but yeah. I mean, I guess if you give him a, I don't know, Pitts or a, a Kelsey or a, a Andrews, then sure, maybe we're talking about something else, but uh, Njoku's not that. Hey, uh, you know what? Speaking of tight ends, we got another tight end in our news. Uh, George Kittle, he is dealing with a lower body injury and he's expected to miss OTAs. I just brought that up because it's OTAs. It's that, That's it. It's not out the entire off season, anything like that. It's very undisclosed. And the reason I brought it up is because it's yet another injury for George Kittle, mm-hmm. but also it's not something that sounds very long term. So no, let's no. just it's just and, a little and, a little trickle of smoke coming out of the fire. That's all. Just keep an eye on it. It'll probably be fine. The only thing I would say is if in fact Trey Lance is going to be the starter, he's missing time to work out chemistry with Lance. That's the it. other thing I was going to say is sometimes they list insignificant injuries for veteran players just so they don't have to take part in these sort of things. Yeah. Yeah. Take your time off. Come in with much like lines. our next, much like the, much like the next guy in our news is Christian McCaffrey. He is not expected to take part in preseason activities. Now, I assume that means OTAs in general, and not. All of the preseason, offseason workouts that the team does and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I think from the article that I did read, which I believe was on like Fantasy Pros, um, it was more of a, and they were even in that article, they were speculating that it was more, he's dealt with a lot of injuries as of late. Let's limit his contact and try and get him back into playing shape and 100% to playing shape. And eliminate contact. So this is also comes with the caveat of Chris McCaffrey has not taken part in preseason activities for the last couple of seasons as well. Anyways, outside of injury. So it could just be him being the veteran, not, you know, just taking a sideline to all this stuff, you know, just working on film and whatever, you know, stuff I read. Mm -hmm. I'm just passing the news along to you, to y'all. That's it. I was reading an article while you were looking cool, at cool. it. This headline says unlikely to play in preseason. But yeah, why why OTAs? Yeah, I think you'll be held to that out of that too. Yeah. I, I it's hated, a preseason. I hated I'm, reading I'm this. I'm saying preseason because uh-huh. that's what I that's what I read. I hate reading this because the second sentence it says career has been plagued by injury, and I was like, that's actually accurate AAF. And that's sad. Sad. Plagued. Plagued by injuries. Not necessarily, but yeah. I mean, it's a matter of opinion, obviously, but I think it's pretty it's accurate. A very, it's a very objective subject. Damn it, Chris. There, there's that thing that we never actually look up. Subjective which is when it comes down to each person can be subjective in what they think about it. So subjective means it could be up to, it's up to you. Objective is objectively, you can't really dispute this. So it would be subjective, I believe, sir. Anyways, we're here to talk about situations <laughs> to watch from every team and not talk about the difference between objective and subjective, and subjective. because we're gonna we're gonna debate over this anyways later we'll on. Spend all of July, we'll spend all of July doing that, Josh. Don't worry about it. 
I I'll spend all folks. of July and the rest of my life doing that with myself because I'm like, I just don't know, understand why would it be it's like something so similar to anyways. We're going to start with the AFC North, and that's me because I'm a Colts fan. And so and I just a took becomes the AFC before in that as well. <laughs> Left to right, and let's start with that. Let's start with the Baltimore Ravens here, Chris. Um, I chose the the situation to check on is the non Mark Andrews pass catchers for the Baltimore Ravens. As we all know, probably by now, uh, currently the Ravens' receiving core looks something along the lines of Rashad Bateman, Devin Duvernay, James Prochet the second, and it is pronounced Prochet. Chris, I didn't even know who James Prochet was until I just started writing this down. Never heard of him. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Here's who James uh, here's who James Prochet is. He's a guy who tracks the ball well, but isn't the fastest guy in the world. Um, but the Ravens have three other guys who are like slot receivers and Mark Andrews. So I don't really know what's going on here with the Ravens. They don't have an alpha dog. Everyone's I've I mean, like, dude, I'm on Twitter, and all these fantasy guys are just like, oh, my God, Rashad Bateman, Rashad Bateman. Like, he wasn't like he was injured for a lot of last year, and when he was healthy, he wasn't all that special. So I'm just – maybe it's year two is going to be great for Rashad Bateman, and I hope so, and I hope the Ravens are right by not replacing him. I think that if this is a prime place for Will Fuller to land. He's – a more experienced and better version. He's a rich man's Marquise Brown. Hollywood Brown. That's what Will Fuller is. Prime landing spot for him. But that's why I wanted to highlight, you know, like situations to watch is this, like, does Lamar Jackson work uh, work out well? Does he look like he's, uh, you know, running plays well with Shaw Bateman, have a good connection with him? Devin Duvernay, he's been a guy that I was kind of on the last couple of years, and I was – Kind of hoping it was poised to break out with Hollywood being the over the top guy, Devin Duvernay being the under underneath, you know, slot guy. Mm-hmm. Hasn't really worked out that well. Duvernay's more of a special team slash, you know, wide receiver three for him. So, you know, I just I'm I'm j i am i am do not know, man. I'm is this gonna be the beginning of the are they setting up with Lamar Jackson to fail so that they don't have to give him a big contract? That's also mm-hmm. what I'm wondering too. But the big situation is non Mark Andrews pass catcher. I think Mark Andrews is going to be he's able to replicate run. be able to replicate replicate eighty five percent of what he did last year, assuming health, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because he played part of the year without Hollywood. Anyways, Hollywood missed only a couple of games, but even then he would disappear for stretches, and there was just more or less the same cast characters. Anyways, so I don't why not? I don't think Lamar throws terribly well outside the hashes, honestly. I think that's part of the I problem. I think you're, unless he's outside of the hashes too. Oh well, yeah. The <laughs> and then it's just down the field, uh, and not such a problem. Um, but he's got some arm strength. Don't get me wrong, but I, I it's just it's not his forte, man. They don't they don't call plays like that. Maybe it's not his Matt forte. Mm-hmm. Long. Anyways, <laughs> uh, next 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 on my list is the Cincinnati Bengals. And Chris, I gotta say, man, it was probably one of the hardest teams I had to do. Because the Bengals' offense was, frankly, man, drink. Uh, I am. <laughs> it was awesome last year. It was. It was last. It was awesome last year. Joe Mixon was was on point. Uh, you know, uh, Joe Burrows. He, he missed a game or two with it with nagging injury. That's fine. Uh, or just you know, Nixon dings. But I mean, Tiggins, T. Higgins was okay at times. Jamar Chase was. Pretty boom bust, but hey, man, that's for a rookie wide receiver. One of the best rookie <sighs> wide receiver seasons we've ever seen. Ever seen. It probably Exactly. Ever exactly. Um, Tyler Boyd was a little kind of an afterthought. Uh, CJ Uzama's gone, but now Hayden Hurst is in there uh, at tight end. I'm not really that. I, initially, I wanted to do this on Hayden Hurst. I'm not into Hayden Hurst so far. Um, I just, we kind of see what Hayden Hurst is. And he's just kind of a guy at tight end. He's he can block, he can catch, not the fastest, but blah, blah blah. What I am looking for is consistency. Can we get some continuity from last year to to this year? Can uh, Jamar Chase be more consistent? Can um, T 
can Tiggins and Chase coexist? Can Tyler Boyd be a little bit more of a week to week factor? You know, that sort of thing. I just want to see a little bit more continuity. Uh, the Bengals have, have done some to increase, to beef up their offensive line, give Joe Burrow a little bit more time to throw the ball and throw it accurately and make decisions. So that's the thing that I'm looking for. Can they build on what they did last year and become even better? Mm -hmm. And and hopefully same, not regress. Same cast of characters returning, as you more or less mentioned. Well, except more for or less, end, yeah. Except for tight end. It's really that's a lateral move, in my opinion. Lyle Collins at right tackle is real interesting coming from Dallas. Uh, I'm I'm still wondering. See, uh, JC Tr uh, Trotter is out there in free agency as a center, and I'm wondering if they d may maybe sign him at some point, like relatively soon. To be uh, yeah. to really solidify that, okay, that okay. offensive line. I like um. It. Anyways, uh, let's move along with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, and uh, the thing I want to highlight here is Deshaun Watson. Does he have chemistry with, with Amari Cooper or um the aforementioned David and Joku? You know, like I don't think you have David and Joku that's that that level of tight end money to just have him be a a, a blocker and a you know a. a a second or, or tertiary character in the offense. You know, this team has spent a lot of capital, draft capital and money to get Deshaun Watson in here. Obviously, the off the field stuff is is aside with Deshaun Watson. We're not going to talk about that. Um, but the, and and really the thing is just Deshaun Watson. The guy hasn't the guy spent all of last year not playing. Was he practicing? Yes. Was he working in the film room? Yes. Was he working with the, the, the just in general? Yes. He was, Deshaun Watson, once again, off the field stuff aside, was doing everything to be football ready as possible last year. I'm not defending the guy. I'm also not promoting him. This is a fantasy show, so that's what we're going to talk about here. Work ethic of his has never been in question. Supposed, for Deshaun Watson. Supposedly, the supposedly the guy is still in, has kept himself in football shape. He wasn't just sitting. He wasn't pulling a Josh and sitting in his lazy boy eating potato chips. All right, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of what Josh says. Um, you know, like it's just how is he going to mesh with Amari Cooper and the rest of the pass catchers? Honestly, I think the guy to really look out for here in Cleveland is still Donovan Peoples Jones. Like Amari Cooper and well, David like, Joku, because of their contracts and their situation, are going to go super high. DPJ, like a, like a, like that's a Will, the guy. That's like the a guy. Will Will Fuller replacement. Anyway. Like a Will Fuller replacement. Like a Will Fuller replacement. Like uh, Watson had uh, two years ago in Houston. <laughs> sort yeah. of ish. DPJ is yeah, taller, yeah. but still, yeah. Sure, sure. Go. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe not as refine a route running, but you know, still let's move along to the Steelers. And this one's going to be, I think pretty quick. And this is obviously it's low hanging fruit alert, Chris. We need a drop for the low hanging fruit. Yeah, we really I do. I want to get a soundboard, <laughs> especially when we start. That's, that's cool. That's cool. No, 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 it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Um, but the quarterback battle between Mitch Trubisky and Mitch Trubisky, I mean, <laughs> sorry, uh, Kenny Pickett's battle himself. <laughs> It's like he's battling, battling mirror Kenny Pickett's or Mitch Trubisky is battling Mitch Trubisky. I mean, Kenny Pickett's. But here's the thing. I, I looked into this. So here's what Ben Rosberg has brought to the table over the last three seasons. Four seasons, actually, um, as far as fantasy value. Because Ben Rosberg has actually done well for his wide receivers. And that's why I kind of want to be like, is Mitch Trubisky going to be a step up from maybe what Ben Rosberg was last year? Because the Steelers did a little bit to beef up their offense line, which was a prob a definite problem last year. Yep. Um, but and and maybe that was part of the reason why uh, Big Ben in, in his you know ultimate season with the, in the NFL wasn't that good. But I mean, last year he was a quarterback twenty one, and he only he, he was only racking up a little over fourteen and a quarter points uh, fantasy points per game. Twenty twenty though. It, he was he was at almost eight, 18 and a half points. So he dropped over four and a, over four and a quarter points in one season. Um, twenty nineteen for Big Ben was obviously the year that he injured his elbow. He ended up getting Tommy John surgery. 
So, you know, and then, but here's the thing. In 2018, granted, that was almost five years ago. He was at over 21 points per game. Granted, you know, he was getting older and blah, blah, blah. Team changed around him in the, in the time being. Yada, yada. Here's what Mr. Trubisky did over the same time frame. And 2021, he was the backup to Josh Allen in Buffalo. Now, did that same quarterback coach that t- taught Josh Allen to be more accurate help Mr. Trubisky? Let's, for the sake of the Steelers, let's hope so. Mm-hmm. Let's, for the sake of fantasy players, let's hope so. But in 2020, though, Josh Allen or Mr. Trubisky was the quarterback 27. He played in only 10 games because he was pretty ineffective, but he was scoring 16 points per game in that time. And that wasn't really based on his rushing either. And I'm going to get to his rushing in, in a sure, second here. Yeah. Important. Mm-hmm. And in 2019, Josh Allen, or I keep saying Josh Allen, <laughs> Mitch Trubisky was the quarterback 26. So slightly better, played in 15 games. I think there was more injury based in, in the time that he missed, in that one game that he missed. Um, and he was a, a little over 14 points per game, fantasy points. Let's put it that way. But in 2018, though, 14 games played. Almost 19 points per game. And that was the year that Mr. Risky had 421 rushing yards. Yeah. Every other year in Chicago, though, Mr. Risky, and thank you, Matt Nagy, for this. Mr. Risky never topped 200, never topped 250 rushing yards. So Mike Tomlin was the guy that let Big Ben in Big Ben in his heyday. Run some run a little run some run plays. And some of it was just the play broke down and Big Ben would just run. Or he was just a big guy and he would just push defenders around. Shed tackles. Mitch Trubisky is not as big as Big Ben, but, no, no. you know. But Kenny Pickett is more or less the same guy. So let's just kind of – only he's inexperienced, whereas Mitch Trubisky. I think Mitch is going to be the starter to be, to start the season just based on experience alone. What do you think, man? I would agree. I think – uh, you kind of touched on it with the running and I, I just didn't see enough, uh, either designed runs or play action rollouts. I feel like and I'm not a Bears fan. So you know, by all means, you know, chime in in the comments, let me know if I'm off here, but I think most Bears fans would agree that Matt Nagy did not call a good game for Trubisky year in year out. Um, and until, did the exact last... same with Justin Fields last year. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's changed obviously now that Nagy's gone. So hopefully that's looking on the up and up. But yeah, I absolutely think uh, Trubisky will be the starter. I think they've got two guys, again, you kind of touched on it there, that are similar enough, if not very similar, to kind of uh, not have to worry so much about game plan if you know somebody's not performing well or gets hurt or et cetera, et cetera. So I think they, they, they've got a better quarterback room than they did last year with a over-the-hill, uh, 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 can't uh, uh, you know, run. He never really ran a ton. He was really more of a behind-the-scrimmage movement guy and as you said it's because of his size he could just, just get in the pocket sort of yeah. thing yeah and so but the elbow surgeries really sapped him of his his throw strength so i think now i don't go- know about that i think i think well that- tommy johns is supposed to make it better but i think clearly he lost velocity whatever the reason i th- be. i think they that during the time that he got his his elbow injured mm-hmm. their offensive line went to went to poo and there's a perfect storm for sure like all oh, i'm sorry old ben yeah. Uh, younger Ben with a subpar offensive line would still be the big Ben we knew because again, just division arm strength and that ability to just keep that play alive. And Uh whether Mm -hmm. it's uh, Trubisky or um, Kenny Pickett, uh, yeah, I just, I think Deontay is still a target magnet drops for sure. For sure. You got to think about those drops, but maybe you can get a bargain on them. I think the guy look at you're looking for is Chase Claypool. He's going to be so cheap. It's going to be ridiculous. All right, Chris. So let's move along to the uh, NFC North, man. Um, All right. I've got the NFC North. Let's see here. We'll start with the Bears. Uh, the situation I'd like to keep an eye on yep, there Bears. is the Bears pass catchers. Uh, the Bears pass catchers uh, headlined, I guess you could say, by uh, Darnell Mooney. Uh, then we've got Echo and Amy St. Brown, Byron Pringle, Tajay Sharp. Uh, then moving along to the tight ends, we've got Cole Komet and Ryan Griffin. Whoa, no. whoa, whoa. You forgot about J- Valus Jones. Come on, rookie out of uh, 
You know that one college? Yeah, he's buried on the depth chart. I'm not too worried about it. But we'll, <laughs> see. we'll see. We'll see. So, um, ironically, we kind of touched on a little bit with the Nagy conversation there um, a second ago. Uh, but I just don't see a true number one. I see a lot of speed with uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Mooney, St. Brown, and Pringle. Mooney. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a Mooney. I can't, I'm not going to say I'm a Mooney truther. I'm a Mooney fan. I absolutely expect a pretty decent season out of him. But I, again, I just, Justin Fields is such a question mark. Uh, Mooney, uh, you know, did some great things last year, but it, it's just, you know, I don't know, man. It's, it's just not a great outlook as far as I'm concerned here, but, but, uh, you know, things could, things could turn around quickly. Um, as far as the coach, new coaching staff, and, uh, really, uh, like I said, I see a lot of speed, so I'm expecting uh, downfield throws, which we did not see from Nagy's play calling okay. last year. <laughs> what? <laughs> I expect to see some downfield throws. Uh, I think St. Brown's got a decent amount of speed. Uh, Pringle, I've, I've always liked, but he's just kind of a jag, just a guy in Kansas City, so I don't expect a lot there. What I would hope is that we get a you know 3,500-yard season out of fields, and he runs around enough to make him maybe a... I don't know. Top fifteen. Are you guy? hoping? Are you hoping for five hundred yards? Because with thirty five hundred yards passing, you're definitely hoping for five hundred yards rushing. Oh, rushing? Yeah, yeah, something in that ballpark for sure. Five, six. You um, could do I, it. I think he's. Got, I bet you. I bet, I bet you probably get closer to four thousand because I'm being conservative with the thirty five hundred. To be, to be frank, you're being very conservative. Drink and drink. Well, especially in today's NFL. But hey, I mean. Prove it, you know, show me. Um, so that's where I'm at with the Bears pass catchers. I'm going to move along here. Right. Uh, I see a lot of speed. I'm hoping to see some downfield throws. But until both fields, the, the play caller in Chicago and these pass catchers show me something, you know, yeah, I, I don't expect anything except uh, hopefully Mooney and maybe Komet. Maybe Komet finally works out I, for you. I expect the Bears to be one of the worst teams in the NFL yeah, next yeah, year. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of there with it. Talked about not fantasy wise, but just in general. Yeah, you're not going to have a lot of pieces of the, of that team. Uh, speaking about horrible teams, uh, on to the Lions. No, I really did like their offseason. We'll get to that in a quick second Oh, here. my God, I love their offseason. Yeah, so my situation to keep an eye on here in the offseason for the Lions is the wide receivers. Uh, in particular, the top three, which is you know pretty much your starters there. They, uh, to, for a reminder for folks, they brought in DJ Chark. They drafted Jamison Williams, and Amon Ross St. Brown had a so heck there. of a season. Amon Ross St. Brown... A reminder for folks had 119 targets, 90 catches, 912 yards, not a great average, right around 10 yards, more of a possession guy, five touchdowns last year. I mean, it was just great season for rookie receivers <laughs> is pretty much the way to put it. So there's a lot of hype around Monroe St. Brown uh, in the fantasy community. Okay. But of course, they brought in uh, the rookie who is not on this list. Which one did they get, Josh? Jamison Williams, Jameson my boy, Jamison Williams. I think he ended up as my number one before draft time. Anyway. Uh, what, so, really? Yeah, I think so. Wasn't it Jameson? No, because he's not going to play for most of this year. No. Yeah. So he's banged up. At the beginning of the year, you can probably expect Amon Ra St. Brown to be a target magnet again uh, is where we're sitting there. But uh, to kind of fill out the wide receiver two and three positions, and as the season moves forward, then we get a healthy Jameson Williams. Uh, he's got DJ Chark to deal with there. Uh, another footnote here, Cephas, uh, didn't put his first name. My apologies. Quintez. Uh, Quintez Cephas. Quintez Cephas. And, and Khalif Raymond were productive is the way to put it, I guess. They were fine. They were okay. They were Khalif okay. Raymond was okay. Yeah. Uh, and they, I think they brought in Josh Reynolds, or was he already there a year ago? Anyway, he's another guy. They traded. Way. They made a low-level trade for him there in midseason go. last year. So, I'm kind of over the whole DJ Chark. Thing. Not a De- not a Detroit Lions fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of over the whole DJ Chark thing. I think he's shown us. I think he's had his best season, but I could be wrong. He could run away with the. Two, I disagree, but two, okay. With the one, he could run away with the one position in the beginning of the season, uh, if not two. indefinitely. Uh, I'm not going to be- put my money on that, though. Um, but yeah, that's the posi- uh, situation to keep an eye on there in the offseason for the Lions. Yeah, by all means, interject, can, sir. In, in, in between, in between uh, teams here, let's just refresh everyone's 
on the listeners thing is that between week 13 and 18, I'm on Ross St. Brown. This is obviously we always go by half PPR. He was like the wide receiver three, not a wide receiver three, the the wide receiver three. The lowest points he scored was 11.3. The second most, the second lowest points he scored in that time was 19.5 points in a, in a week. Mm -hmm. And those last six, six weeks, obviously you're not playing in week 18, but still, this guy was winning you leagues down the stretch. Before fire. then, before then, he his his highest points that he scored was in week four and five, and that was against Chicago and Minnesota with ten points in those in both those weeks. Other than that, it was a dis, a, abysmal, not a dismal, abysmal. So this guy was fire once he finally got up to NFL Figured speed. Things out, yeah, exactly. And uh, another, it was, I mean. Another off I don't know, like maybe he made some sort of like, uh, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, uh, what what is that term I was using? Dynasty, Chris um, made a leap. Uh, Faustian, Faustian deal with the devil, oh. but uh, <laughs> you know, I think the game just slowed down for him, and he got more chemistry with his quarterback, if or I his brain guess. sped up. However, you want to look at it. Yeah. You want to look at it, right? On to the Packers. A little bit more pass catcher talk here. Duh. Low hanging fruit. We know the situation we're looking at here. Devontae Adams is gone. Can they replace the 224 targets that are left from MVS? Mark Kez Valdez. Can that you? is an insane. Is, is that Devontae multiple Adams. years? Because that's nope, just ins- last year. I mean, obviously, the 80, 90% of that, 85%, whatever, is Devontae. But yeah, I mean, it was worth throwing in MVS's targets because he's gone. Uh, reminder. And, and, and okay. Echonami is St. Brown. Yeah, he's gone too. Exactly. I did not throw his in there. His were pretty low, his targets. Just uh, 20 or 40, something like that. Uh, reminder, uh, Alan Lazard did have 60 targets and eight touchdowns last year. So decent red zone threat there. Uh, oh, and then, of course, dead. the rookie they brought in, uh, uh, Christian Watson. Uh, size, speed, specimen, just looks the part. Um, but played at a small school out of the gate, especially fantasy-wise. I mean, I'm 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 staking my flag. I just I'm not into him. I just I don't think I think he's a good project, and I'm in a win now situation. And the, to be selfish, um, so I'm not really high on Mister uh, Watson there. But I, I, maybe I'm alone there. Um, I, I think mean, he's okay. I just I think that everyone is just making that they're doing the same thing with Sky Moore. Is that it's. Yep, well, yep. I mean, I mean, Tyreek Hill's gone, so there's Sky Moore, and he's he's Tyreek Hill, and you know, so he's just gonna be Tyreek Hill, and then the one, yeah, and then Christian Watson is well, I mean, you know, Devonte Adams is gone, so I mean, he's just gonna be Devonte. A- I mean, he's big, right? That's all you need, and fast. He's big and fast, right? Devonte Adams ain't actually all that big. He's like six one. You Adam? know, he's not Megatron, dude. You know. Oh yeah! Oh no, no, no he's like six about... three. Sorry. Yeah, he's but, pretty big. You know, yeah. still. I was talking about Watson though. Um, so I, you know, I think he's going to lean on his veterans in the beginning of the season. You're going to see a lot of Lazard and and, and Randall Cobb. Yeah, uh, Devontae I'm... Adams. He's only six one. He ain't that big. Really? Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you know, uh, Cobb has shown some red zone uh, uh, acumen even later in his career. Obviously, he's not the guy he was uh, with Jordy Nelson five years ago or whatever it was. Um, but Lazard is not, not got the speed, but he's got trust of Aaron Rodgers. And again, he's a good red zone target. So those numbers could go up. Uh, and hey, going up from eight touchdowns is nothing to sneeze at. So keep an eye on that. Here's 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 my here's my thing about mm-hmm. about the Packers. And I'm sorry to interrupt you. You're once good. Again. good. I was all done. Uh, last last time, I just like this this I this thing has been itching in the back of my brain of what if Devontae Adams, who has he's the superior footwork wide receiver he's not the fastest mm. but he beats he beats coverage by his footwork and i mean like and they show things all the time when you watch a packers game why Devonte adams is always beating these receivers it's not because he's fast it's not because he's like yeah he's physical too he's but like his speed footwork. NFL, sure yeah but no he's it's not his calling card what if he taught that what if he taught that to alan lazard who's bigger mm-hmm you know, I'm just like maybe Alan Zard. Maybe we're all sleeping on Lazard. Hey, maybe they, they, they run out. You know, you run out of room in the red zone. That's the whole thing with uh, uh, my warehouse counterparts, uh, son-in-law. 
or something like that. Really? Small world? I know someone who is who is mildly related to the Alan Lazard, yes. To close up the NFC North here, uh, I've got the Vikings. Uh, the direction I want to take this one is how will the new head coach, Kevin O'Connell, uh, the Rams' excellent, former excellent choice, offensive Chris. coordinator, how will he use his weapons? Um, I mean, duh. Rams had an amazing offense. They had the duo of receivers. Yes, they lost Woods, Stendry, but then again, OBJ, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. filled in quite uh, beyond admirably very well. Um and I forget the third guy. I always get Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds used to be in L.A. Uh, anyway. Um, I believe you're talking about Van Jefferson. Thank you. Uh, so my attention kind of went to Thielen because I think this Jefferson Jefferson is a um, – Jefferson is a shoe in I mean, he, he's a young talent. He's going to put up uh, amazing numbers. I don't think we need to worry too much about him. Thielen uh, has become – uh, his average has really gone down. He averaged 10.8 uh, yards per reception last year. Uh, he missed mm, four games because uh, he only played 13. Um, but he did come down with 10 touchdowns. So uh, the vet in the red zone continues to excel, uh, but don't expect a huge volume of receptions, targets, etc. I, I they brought in a rookie, uh, Jalen Naylor. Don't know a lot about him. I'll be honest with you, but there's just not a lot behind those top two receivers, and we'll see what Irv Smith can do at tight end. But I'm not holding my breath. As of now, KJ Osborne is listed as the third receiver. There's an Iowa kid there that's been there for two or three years. Uh, Amir, Amir Smith, Smith or Marset. Mar Amir Smith Marset. Who I like. Um, he's but... more. He's more of the 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 punt kick returner and I was just gonna say special teams. Yep. Uh, yeah, he's more of a wide receiver three, four in, or even five in the NFL. At he's best, just, he's probably. not that big. He's not extremely fast. You got to go. Okay. Hands, you know, that sort of thing. Sorry. You're good. You're go good. Hawks. So, you know, they need to start thinking about replacing Thielen as far as I'm concerned, but Hey, maybe he comes in healthy this year. Maybe he gets a little bit of that magic back, but I'm just going to Osborne for is, is in like dynasty circles. People are in, are in on Osborne. Okay. I don't know if I'm in, but, you know. That's all I've got on the NFC North for situations to watch in the offseason. Let's move along to the AFC East. Uh, I mean, here we go. Buffalo Bills. This one was a hard one, Chris. I, I got, I'm not going to lie. Like, do I go with the running back position? There's some, obviously, like, especially in dynasty communities, there is some big turmoil there with... Um, James Cook coming in, and <laughs> I don't care. Um, wide receivers, tight ends. They brought an OJ Howard to, you know, run alongside Dawson Knox. Um, but I'm going to go wide receiver here. I'm going wide receiver, and I'm and I'm narrowing it down to non Stefan Diggs wide receivers. Diggs is wide receiver one in Buffalo. They paid him big, and I look forward to that continue uh, as far as Diggs being the wide receiver one. Last year, Diggs was the wide receiver seven. Um, you know, it didn't feel like it, but he was. But if you look at the targets, Beasley, Cole Beasley was was second uh, behind Stefan Diggs with 112 targets. Manny Sanders was had 72 targets, and Gabe Davis had 63. Um, the Bills brought in Javinson Crowder though to repl to help replace Cole uh, Beasley and a little bit of Manny Sanders too, because I didn't even know this, but Manny Sanders is. Apparently not with the Bills anymore. Is he still? I thought he was still there. Anyway, I guess so. Um, Crowder, Jamison Crowder has uh, he he has averaged over eighty targets the last two years, but he's struggled with uh, injuries and quarterback play over those two years. Crowder, if Crowder can stay healthy, he might be the Bills receiver you want because Bill, uh, D Cole Beasley has been the Bills' number two wide receiver as far as targets go the last two seasons. Crowder is, is just – he's just not going to score touchdowns. That's not his thing. He ha does have a seven-touchdown season, and he has two seasons with six touchdowns. But that's really not that sexy. Um, the, the one last thing I want to get into is the – kind of the low-hanging fruit of the situation is that Gabe – Davis. Yeah, I was went. waiting for you to get there. <laughs> nuclear! Nuclear! 
uh, in the divisional round overtime loss to the Chiefs this past off season or this past uh, postseason. Eight receptions, two hundred and one yards, and four touchdowns. He set a record for a postseason game with four touchdowns by one receiver. The thing is, and and Chris, you know this. You you know that like at this point last year, I was all about Gabe Davis. Yep, got off to a slow start, so you were a little like ah. I had a very slow start, and so about halfway through the season, I'm like, well, you know, maybe now's the time to buy. And then it came to the point where it was just like, well, did, don't even have him on your roster because he, outside of Dynasty, don't have him on your roster, which is fine. You know, like it would his explosion was. It was it was in the postseason, so he did so he didn't did nothing any good for, you for fantasy. fantasy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm worried about Gabe Davis moving forward because of Jamison Crowder. Jamison Crowder, as we have talked about in episodes past, is probably when healthy is probably one of the best slot wide receivers in the NFL. He really is. I mean, he's just he's just you throw the ball remotely in his way, and it somehow ends up in his hands. It seems like he might not get a lot after that catch. But he's going to get that catch. He's going to move them chains. That's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's move along to my, the Miami Dolphins here. And uh, Chris, uh, you can sound that low hanging fruit alert here right. again. Because uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I could have said two here, but the real situation is some clarity in the Dolphins' backfield. And that is definitely the low hanging fruit in this one. Um, I have a feeling the only way we're going to know of any clarity of this the Dolphins running backs is going to be re- injuries m- and one or multiple injuries of running back position for the Dolphins. And I don't, I'm not really wishing for injury here, but I mean, when you have Chase Edmonds, Sony Michelle, Raheem Mostert, Miles Gaskin is still there. The, 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 the previous three are brought in a free agency they still have Salvin Ahmed, and, and not to overemphasize his name, but you know, just trying to pronounce it right. Um, the problem is that there's been a little bit of an injury history with these guys. Raheem Moser has missed twenty three over the twenty three games for the past two years. That's significant. Um, Edmonds only missed four, but he uh, and he seems to be, but he seems to be firmly firmly entrenched in a role as far as pass catcher. Other than last year. The guy's never topped over 100 uh, rushing attempts in his NFL career. Chase Edmonds, that is. Sonny Michelle missed seven games in 2020, but last year he was kind of a he was kind of a, a mainstay in the in the Rams' backfield because of injuries. Daryl Henderson got injured first and foremost. Cam Akers got injured, then Daryl Henderson did, and then Sonny Michelle kind of stepped up and he was okay. He was okay for the Rams. Granted, better. Potentially better offensive line to blo- to create holes for Sony Michelle, but Sony Michelle is the guy that I'm actually hitching my horse, the cart that I'm hitching my horse to, or the horse, horse I'm hitching, that my, I'm hitching my cart to. My right? cart that I'm hitching my horse to, maybe. The, anyways, however it goes, I mean, Mah- but Mostert is probably going to be the one that everyone's high on. I'm going with a dark horse here, and. Once again, back to the olden West days, I'm going to do Dark Horse, and it's going to be Sony Michelle. Um, let's move along to the New England Patriots. Last one on this one because we're running really long here. Uh, second to last, Mac Jones, McCorkle Jones. He surprised the hell out of everyone last year, and, and he kind of spun straw in the goal for the Patriots. He really did. Um, he fought off. He 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 fought off Cam Newton. And the, got the Patriots to quit Cam Newton. And he actually helped lead the Patriots to a playoff appearance. And he did that with Nelson Aguilar, Hunter Henry, Ken, yeah. uh, Kendrick Bourne, and Jerry Spurd. Props to him. That's gross. Yeah. The thing about the thing about McCorkle here is that he averaged only about four, 14 fantasy points per game. And he threw 13 interceptions. We'll call the 13 interceptions a bit of a, you know, warming up the NFL sort of thing. That wasn't really his game in, in college. Once again, he played for Alabama. Um, but it, the, the Patriots traded for Devontae Parker. They drafted um, Tyquan Thornton, the wide receiver out of Baylor. He's a big guy who 
needs to be sanded down, buffed, and polished. So, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I got a real w- weird mental image there. Please continue. <laughs> I mean, he's just he's just a raw dude, you, yeah, you know, for sure, dude. Big twelve, not even just Big Twelve receivers, but Baylor receivers. Man, there's a long history of of uh, busts. Baylor receivers. Yeah, same with USC receivers. USC receivers as well, but still, whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Mac Jones is the is the guy to look for. I think in the New England Patriots. I know you would probably argue that it's the running backs. If you want to go ahead, real quick, just make it real quick. Um, you have two minutes. Go. Uh, I mean, yeah. I guess the situation to take a look at is the running backs, but it's so convoluted. I almost don't want to look at the running backs. You know, um, and I do have some hope that uh, Mac Jones can make a leap forward. I just think we're going to see more Belichick bully ball defense. Run it, run it some more. Keep the reins on the defense. Young... Took a step on paper, though the defense took a step back. That's yeah. No, I agree. I agree, hundred percent. I'd like to see a little bit, a little bit more pace, a little bit more throwing, but I don't know if I'm going to get it. I don't know All if right, we're going to get it. Chris, uh, let's my ultimate one for the AFC East. Um, I know this is going to be a longer episode, but that's okay. But let's keep it rolling. And it's the New York Jets. And I want to talk about Michael Carter and Brees Hall. Um, the Jets spent a third round pick on the NC running back. And uh, that would be uh, Michael Carter, the second. Um, but he was the Jets leading back uh, last year. He started 11 games, but Zach Wilson showed that he was green, no pun intended. And the Jets faltered bad. And part of that was their offense as well. Uh, Michael Carter did rack up 639 yards and and had a, a 147 rushing attempts and and 325 receiving yards, 36 receptions on 55 targets. 55 targets, that ain't bad, dude. Mm-hmm. Carter Star was rising. He really was. It was before absolutely. they drafted, before the NFL draft, before mm-hmm. that day two draft, like early in day two, when they the Jets traded up to take a Breeze Hall. And there was something I wish I had saved a tweet that someone had done a, a side-by-side comparison of um, Jonathan Taylor ran a 4.39 uh, 40, so did Brees Hall. Mm-hmm. Uh, tra- team traded up to, to traded up three spots, two or three spots, like the Colts did for Jonathan Taylor. The Jets did the same for um, Brees Hall. So on and so on and so on and so on. Here's the thing, though. Is that Jonathan Taylor? And there was a, there's been, man, we should have wrote this list down, but there's been a, a little bit of a list of teams kind of some, sometimes mm-hmm. kind of giving running backs, easing them, easing them in a little bit. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, the, Vi- the Vikings, yeah, Colts, did, the Vikings yeah. did it with Adrian Peterson and um, Chester Taylor being oh, their good call. Kind wow. of, Pulled that one back in the day. Yep. That's a perfect example. People forget that, man. Adrian Peterson can, didn't. I mean, yeah, he had a thousand yards in his rookie year, but so did Chester Taylor, the guy, his uh, veteran incumbent. You know, um, so are we looking at something similar with Brees Hall? Like, I mean, Brees Hall is a bigger, maybe faster. I think is faster than Michael Carter. Okay. Maybe not better hands. Hard to say. I mean, is Michael Carter going to be the guy that spells Brees Hall, or is Brees Hall going to come in and just be a 50-50 year one? I don't know. Chris, what are you hoping? You drafted him at the 101 in our in our Dynasty Rookie Draft. What are, uh, what are you thinking here? I mean, I hope he's the next you know, Adrian Peterson, Jonathan Taylor. But, but in both of those examples, you had... I think he wanted him to be more Jonathan Taylor than Adrian Peterson, but... Well, I mean, Peterson doesn't catch balls. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, not not in that way. He definitely doesn't catch them now because not in that know, way. Just just you know, Hall of Fame fantasy producer, etc. Um, no, I think Carter's gonna have a role in year one. I think I don't know if you can say one for one. He's the Marlon Mack to Jonathan. You mean Taylor. Reese Hall? I'm sorry. Yes, Reese Hall. You know, I'm not gonna say that he's necessarily the one for one with uh, like it was with uh, like Jonathan Taylor and Mack in year one. I hope it airs more towards the Brees Hall. But again, when I took Brees Hall at the 101, it was a long-term investment. Yes, I'm in a win-now window, but I just couldn't Also pass up based on, on ranking supposed and, talent. Too. And talent, of course, too. Yes, exactly. Uh, go with the talent. Um, and if, in fact, as much as me and you love the Jets offseason, and you know, we still admit that uh, Zach Wilson is a huge question mark. 
it's, you know, you got everything around you this year, man, to do it. So that's what I hope. I hope he's a, uh, right out of the gate, he's a, you know, <laughs> all pro Hall of Fame running back. But I also am tippering my expectations to see more of a Jonathan Taylor year one, more of an Adrian Peterson year one. Cool. That's what I think is going to happen. Chris, who's part of the NFC East? And let's talk about them. Oh, my God. It's the Cowboys, isn't it? Yep. Shh. It Shoot. is. So Shoot. first on the docket, we've got the, Here's the next 20 minutes. The Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. So take, take a deep, uh, sit down and uh, get comfortable folks. I'm going to take a deep breath here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm um, going to just kick back and just tune out. <laughs> no, I'm going to try and push pretty quickly past this situation to keep on for the Cowboys. It's the wide receiver two position to refresh folks. Memory uh, Gallup blew his ACL. Forgive me. I did not write down which week, but uh, there's a lot of talk of probably pup list. Was there like eight? Yeah. It feels Nine? like it. He played. I've got it, was, it was pretty good. It was pretty mid season. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, for sure. Anyways, keep going. Keep going. So, Sorry. And for a reminder, uh, obviously, you know, Amari Cooper is gone. Um, that is 104 targets. Coincidentally, the exact same amount there tied in Dalton Schultz had. Um, not a great average at 12.7 per Dalton reception. Schultz. Eight touchdowns. Uh, you know, obviously, CD Lamb is the darling of everybody's eye. He's going to get a bump in, in volume. He's going to be the guy. Can he beat double teams? We'll see. Uh, as far as the number two goes, I think you have to take a long, hard look at Jalen Tolbert, uh, the rookie they drafted. I, If I had to guess, and from what I'm kind of hearing, they're probably grooming him to be that starter because they got to have somebody. Uh, he played at a smaller school, South Alabama. Uh, really uh, downfield, great average uh, type of receiver here. His final year... 82 catches, 1,474 yards for an 18-yard per reception average and eight touchdowns. That's a threat. Uh, now, can you come into the NFL and do that against NFL corners? We'll see. But I think he's that's the situation oh to look I'm, at. I'm sorry. That's okay. I think that's the situation to look at because, quite frankly, the Dallas offense Drink. is among the best. Uh, to illustrate that, uh, Dallas was second in plays ran. Uh, with 1,153 right behind the Baltimore Ravens. Ironically, there was quite a few runs in that too, but we all know no. Dallas is going to Dallas is gonna play with pace. Dallas is going to have a high-volume offense. Keep an eye out for that wide receiver two battle. I think it's going to go Tolbert, the rookie, while waiting. I got for a Gallup. question for you. While, while waiting for Gallup to get healthy. Please, go ahead. Psst. Is there any potential that it is James Washington? I think he's dinged up. I failed to mention that. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, it's early. We're not <laughs> surely he'll be healthy by the beginning of the season, but don't call me Shirley. I just don't know, man. I think he's kind of a one-trick pony. Uh, kind of what Tolbert does, actually. <laughs> he gets downfield, makes plays. I think Tolbert's got the speed over Washington. No, I would say that would be my answer as of you know June. Okay. On to the right. New York Giants. A uh, situation I like to keep an eye on there is have the G-Men done enough at O-Line to return Saquon to fantasy glory? They drafted the kid uh, Neil Evan. Uh, they're going to put Evan, him at right tackle, it would appear. Evan Neal's? Evan Neal. Yep, uh, exactly, Josh. Thank you. <laughs> Neil Evans? Neil Evans. Everybody's like looking him up. What is this guy Evan talking Nielsen. About? Evan <laughs> Nielsen. It. I read it backwards. My apologies. Um... So, you know, Neelan that's right tackle. Evanston. Typically, right tackle is kind of your more your run blocker than your left tackle is more of your pass blocker. He's a highly touted rookie, one of the best tackles, if not depending on your opinion, uh, in the draft. Um, but, you know, we've uh, been very disappointed with Saquon lately. Saquon had injury. 13 games last year played, so obviously injury. 162 Gone. attempts, but for only 593 yards. That's 45 yards a game, and don't give me that average. That offense was atrocious. It was atrocious, yeah. So I feel like with the pieces they have at receiver, if they could just keep Daniel Jones upright, I think they could at least take a step forward. And again, we're talking about fantasy points for Saquon. We're not talking about winning the division. We're not talking about going to the playoffs. We're not talking about Daniel Jones becoming freaking Joe Montana. Just protect the running back and the quarterback. So uh, that's the position I'm keeping an eye on there is the O-line. What was that? Wait, 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 wait. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. Um, can we back up for a second? I thought we were trying to make Daniel Jones into Joe Montana. <laughs> it's mold, mold. 
at, at bare minimum, I thought we were trying to make him into Peyton Manning. Yeah, right. Good luck with that. Oh, uh, do we have Verde? another team? We have two more teams. No. Oh, Tessa oh, Man, I like some Tessa Verde back in the day. All right, that I'll... statue back there. I know. That statue. Oh, he was, yeah. Well, he was okay with the Jets. Browns? No, anyway. Let's, <laughs> no, move, on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, that that was Washington the... Commanders. Can Carson Wentz raise the fantasy production of the fantasy pieces? In particular, uh, real, 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 real quick side position. note. Mm-hmm. Congratulations for St. Commanders, by the way. Oh, thank you. Because I would have been like, I would have been like, uh, <laughs> uh, football team, soccer team. Yeah. So Elemental P, I don't know what's going on. Here. Anyways, go, go ahead, man. One Sorry. thing working in Wentz's favor, I think, is uh, the similarities and the differences between Indy in Washington. Supposedly, Washington's supposed to have a really good defense. Didn't show up last year. I believe that pass rusher Chase. Maybe they did Indies, but that's okay. Yeah, I think Chase Young is the guy's name. I forget his name, but really a prolific pass rusher, yep. only in his second or third year. Um, so if he's healthy, third maybe that now. helps. Uh, but they weren't so great on defense like we thought they would be last year. Um Indy tends to rely on that defense, tends to run the ball, tends to kind of keep the ball out of Carson Wentz's hands, uh, who threw for 3,563 yards, 27 touchdowns. That's nothing to laugh at there. That's pretty decent. Only, what was it, like seven touch, seven interceptions last year? Seven that is 10? exactly right. Yep, seven, 27 touchdowns, seven interceptions, and he played all I 17 so. games. So, oh, oh, and that ended up, uh, am I on half point? Yes. He shouldn't uh, have, but Quarterback still. 13. So, you know. A bargain, I think, is the way to phrase that. Now, go to Washington. I think you're going to see more volume. I think they're going to need to throw to catch up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have their schedule with me offhand. Whatever. It's the NFC East. They get to play you know, <laughs> Dallas, the New York. Giant Cowboys each and, twice. Yeah. Uh, so um, that's kind of where I'm at with Beagles, Carson Wentz. The Beagles twice. And yes, yeah. I'm saying Beagles. I think his numbers will go up with Washington. So if you're looking at the quarterback himself, sure. Um, but he really didn't support like two fantasy viable wide receivers. It was pretty much Pittman, and that was it. Oh, well, and Taylor, of course, out of the backfield. So, you know, Colts Colts struggled a little bit with their offensive line last year. Yeah, a little did. bit of injury, Injuries. a little bit of whatever. <laughs> a little bit of, exactly. A dabble of this, a dabble of you know, just lack of leadership, I guess. They've I don't got, know. That, that's they've apparently got Trey Turner at right guard. Washington does. We're, so that's, we're, that's I'm, something. I'm, I'm deleting this part, but um, uh-huh. yeah, it just uh, let's let's move on. Yes. Yeah, so uh, so last year, yeah, with Wentz with the Colts, he was the, the their offense. The Colts' offensive line was struggling a little bit with pass protection. I'll, I'll get. I'll give Wentz that. He got a bad rap. Let's hope that Wentz can do better with the, the Washington football team slash commanders the washington um, football yeah, commanders on to the eagles there we go this is an Commanding easy one the football <laughs> the eagles is an easy one to me it's make it or break it for jalen hurts period similar to the jets that we talked about a little bit earlier obviously in completely different points in their career uh, uh but it um but hurts has a good team around him and of course a new toy in aj brown but will they throw enough to keep aj brown fantasy you know, uh, as a wide receiver one. I, I don't think so. This one's uh, an interesting one. It is, So yeah. keep going. I mean, they're going to be a running team. Um, I know they don't have the greatest backs in the world. Uh, Sanders is kind of a miscast as a bell cow. Uh, I also don't think he can last a whole season at that size. Um, but then the quarterback runs, too. So fantasy He's wise, a younger Raheem Mostert. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. So fantasy-wise, I mean, Jalen Hurts himself, yeah, I mean, it's probably a shoe in for a quarterback one because of the rushing. Now, do they change up the play calling, throw, throw a bit more to keep the pressure off of him? Hey, I hated Hurts last year. I hate the Eagles, but you got to give them credit, man. They were the best. I think they were number one in rushing yards in the NFL last year. So you can look at that. But yeah, like I said, it's a situation to keep on. Can Jalen Hurts buoy those offensive, those fantasy pieces and i think devonta smith is <laughs> yeah i mean I, he's gonna get drafted in fantasy but i don't i don't want any part of him what does it say about a guy that okay. you just drafted to go out there and get another receiver an alpha receiver it's like 
I don't know. Maybe they never envisioned because, Devonta to be a number because, one. Because because Devonta Smith isn't he's he's more or less Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, he's a shorter, skinny, really fast guy. That's Take what he does. Off. Take he the just top off. He run. He runs. He runs fast, really straight. Yeah, but if their volume or is he runs, repeat, he runs. He runs fast, really straight. He runs straight, really fast. He runs straight <laughs> so well. Um, so, but if their volume is low again and Jalen Hurts is running all over the place, but, but you know what no, AJ Brown like does is that he is, is that he does everything other than that too, you know? Yeah. He's run after catch guy. You get him the ball. He will put his foot in the ground and make a play. Um, so that's the situation to keep an eye on with the Eagles. And that is the NFC East, sir. What do you got for us next? Let's move along to the division where my stupid Colts reside. And that is the AFC South. And we're going to alphabetically start with the Houston Texans. And the guy I want to focus on here is Davis Mills. Mr. Turkey Neck himself. Outside of... Who, who was other Turkey Neck, Chris? Um, oh. Oh, Mike Glennon. Yep. Um, anyways. I was getting there. <laughs> uh, here And here's the thing. And I'm, I, don't, I don't... Like... Dude, outside of division rivalry for the Colts, I'm... I'm straight up rooting for Davis Mills. Like, I mean, he's not a Tom Brady sixth, sixth, seventh round pick or whatever, but he was a third round pick. So that might as well in this NFL, might as well be sixth, seventh round pick, you know, mm-hmm. in this day and age. Oh, for sure. Um, But I mean, like, can he continue to succeed, you know, from last season? Uh, the Texans brought in Marlon Mack and they drafted, Chris, help me out here. Who the, who the hell did they draft it? The Colts? Um, no, the Texans. They drafted a running back. Um, oh, Pierce, a uh, Florida. Uh, uh, Pierce, Pierce. Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, not the fastest guy in the world, and honestly, I think everyone's sleeping on Marlon Mack for this Texans team. But whatever. Anyways, last year, uh, Davis Mills he threw for twenty six hundred two thousand six hundred sixty four yards, sixteen touchdowns, ten interceptions. Eh. All in six, all in thirteen starts. I said sixteen. I meant thirteen. Um, none of those things are really all that bad for a third round rookie quarterback that got just kind of thrown into the mix. Davis Mills only averaged twelve point eight four fantasy points per game. Um, his and but that was really with his own his his really only his offensive weapon was, and I'm I'm dubbing him Mister One Thousand, and that is. Uh, Brandon Cooks because he does it doesn't matter where he goes he gets a thousand receiving yards Saints uh, Pats goes to a, goes to a poo um, Texans team a thousand receiving yards in his sleep yeah it's like it's like he does whatever he can to get that thousand like he's gonna be one of the most unsung wide receivers probably in NFL history anyways. That twelve point eight four points for McCorkle or for uh not McCorkle uh, <laughs> uh Davis Mills um isn't really starter material but maybe with Mc- with Nico Collins who could potentially stay healthy and that was Nico Collins is the twenty twenty one uh yeah, rookie, he was a rookie that, last that, year or, Texas Tech he was a rookie tall, last year he struggled he struggled with health trying to trying to trying to get trying to get on the field and everything. I don't know if Nico Collins is going to be all that, but the Texans just drafted John Mechie, which is probably one of the best, if not the best, pure slot receivers coming out of I was going to say possession, this draft. yeah, exactly. <laughs> slot possession, you know, kind of one of the same. Not the always, same, yeah. but always, mm-hmm. you know. Um, they also have a second-year tight end, Brevin Jordan, who did show some promise as, rookie, I like Brevin as a rookie tight end. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always say Jordan Brevin. I have it written down <laughs> right, and I, and I said it wrong. Brevin Jordan. Um, his name is backwards. I'm sorry. Um, I just, I don't know, man. You know, division route for the Colts. I'm kind of rooting for Jay, uh, Davis Mills here. Uh, let's move along to my stupid Colts here. I completely skipped over the Tennessee Titans. That's weird. Um, anyways, uh, the, the Colts, though, this is what we're talking about, and that is not... I wanted. I really wanted to talk about Naeem Hines here. There has been some scuttlebutt about the Colts really wanting to get Naeem Hines at, uh, in, more involved this year. But what I really want to talk about is Matt, is Matt Ryan, a.k.a. Matty Ice, 
is he going to be the short term solution that the Colts have been looking for? He's 37. Maybe he's got a few years left in him. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying he's Tom Brady. Tom Brady's going to be 44 here soon, 45. Um, but can, but can Matt Ryan support Michael Pittman? I think he can. I'm worried about Michael Pittman in the red zone because Pittman and every time they, the Falcons got in the red zone, Matt Ryan would not throw to Julio Jones, or if he did, Julio Jones couldn't catch it or whatever. I mean, it's just like, look it up on YouTube. It is just a mix. It's like, it's a like they got the, of the yips. ages. It's like they got the yips in the red zone or something. It's so weird. It's such a weird statistical it's anomaly. so weird. For a large receiver. I, if you if you were to if you were to give me twenty dollars to bet on what team the that Julio Jones is going to sign with in this off season, it's going to be the the Colts. Huh. I'm just saying. But anyways, I, I want to see what Matt Ryan can do. I mean, there's already been some be- there's already been some hype about uh, with Matt Ryan about like how accurate he is and everything. And here's the thing about Matt Ryan: he's probably gonna play behind. Despite what I was saying earlier with Carson Wentz when. Chris, you were talking about Carson Wentz, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is that the Colts were kind of struggling a little bit with pass protection. It's got to be better than what the Falcons were doing for him last God, year. Yes. You know, yes. I'm not saying yeah. I'm not saying Michael Pittman is better than you know um, the unicorn Kyle Pitts, but you know, I'm not. I'm not saying that the receiving weapons are better, but Jonathan Taylor has to be better than. Jonathan Taylor is better than than whatever anybody, the Falcons are putting anybody, out there yeah, at running back. Exactly. All of the running backs combined, and then some. Yeah, you know, like the only thing Colts and me, Matt Ryan, to do is to take the pressure off of Jonathan Taylor at this point. Can he do that? Let's see. Like I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little worried about Matt Ryan turning into Matt Schaub. and like just getting real new to armed late in his yeah, right, late speak, in his career. Speaking of Atlanta guys. That's why I brought up Matt Schaub. Um, Let's move along to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, The one thing I really want to touch on here is Travis Etienne. And I had to pause there because I'm like, Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, I'm going to butcher it at some point. (laughs) Trevor Etienne. Yeah, it's going to happen at some point. And supposedly, I put it on a Discord in a, in the news feed. There is that. Uh, now I'm already screwed up. Travis Etienne has been cleared for just about everything, mm-hmm. everything available for NFL contact because he had suffered that ACL in preseason Early, after yep. getting drafted. Mm-hmm. Very well, it was about like July ish, I think June, July ish last year. Um, that he suffered that that he tore his ACL yeah, and everything. Camp, I think I don't think it was a preseason. Yeah, I think it was training camp. Yeah, it was training camp, but whatever. I feel like it had just started um, too. Training but, camp. Go ahead. But oh yeah, it was like the it was like day one or two or whatever. But James, uh, James Robinson. Who's your Who's your boy there? James Robinson. James Robinson. Is that yeah. who it is? Yep. Yeah. He tore He tore his Achilles or Achilles, as you like to say. I mean, it's tomato. Whatever. Um. The, the the Jacks didn't really. They haven't done pretty much anything to bring in any sort of competition other than drafting um, Snoop. What's his face? Connor in like the six. Yeah, Snoop Connor in like the sixth round of the NFL draft, and even then, he's not all that in a bag of chips. I gotta sound like a Mormon now. Um, hmm. that, that's a bad thing, but I just sound like a Mormon people that I know. Um. So Travis Etienne, man. I mean, I just want to see him like in this off season, like work with the offense. Be, and I don't want to see him be more of a running back than a wide receiver because he was kind of he was catching a lot of balls, and he was kind of like, and it seemed like Clemson in his in his final year in Clemson was kind of shifting away towards that away from that running back role and more of a pass catcher. So I want to see him be more of that traditional running back at least a little bit than pass catcher um tennessee titans last team last team here i know we're running real real long but that's okay we only got you know anyways um 
Chris, what do you want to see from the Tennessee Titans? I know what I want to see, but I just want to, you know, I because of fantasy, I know exactly what I want because to of fantasy, I want to see him throw more, but I don't think I'm going to get what I want. Uh, they're a gr- good, maybe even great defensive team. They they're, they're going to pr- probably gonna win anywhere between ten and thirteen games. So why make a change if you're if you're winning? Uh, I like to see Tannehill's you know volume go up, maybe run a little bit more. But again, I. I I was wrong on him last year in redraft beginning, thinking I was getting a bargain at quarterback, and nothing could be further from truth. Uh, I'd like to see them spell Henry a little, so to keep him fresh and healthy for fantasy folks. But I'm not. Which is weird. Fan. They didn't. They didn't really do much in the draft or in the in free agency to really do that. The guy that I want to talk about for t- Tennessee Titans is Robert Woods, and that's the guy I'm looking go. forward to. It's mm-hmm. not Traylon Burks. It's Robert Woods. I think that Robert Woods has potential to be not to be their twenty twenty two. I know it's I I noticed how I had to look at the calendar what year it was because I'm I'm old as dirt. Um, just to be their wide receiver one that this year, the Tennessee Titans wide receiver one, not a wide receiver one, but. The Tennessee Titans wide receiver one, their premier wide receiver, just because he might miss a game or two. Um, I don't know if they're going to, I don't think he's a candidate for the pup as of right now. Obviously, you have to keep a track of this is a guy who uh, in, tore his ACL in November. So, you know, by the time that the NFL season starts, it'll be a good close to 10 months by the, you know, for heal, healing time and everything. But, I think, you know, maybe he misses a few weeks, you know, just to make him healthy and everything. But I think he's going to be the guy to, to look for and the guy to have, you know. Right. Just real late, and especially in redrafts, real late. Um, Chris, I think we need to talk about some NFC South. Okay, Chris, so uh, I believe you have the NFC South. Why don't that, you kick us uh, off with... What is that, the Atlanta, Atlanta Falcons. Falcons? Yeah, I was uh, biting my tongue because, you know, we're running a little long in time. But I was like, I got a little bit of uh, on uh, Matt Ryan here as it pertains to the guy that was there last year in Atlanta. Um, the situation I like to keep an eye on here, uh, to be more specific, is uh, can Pitts, Kyle Pitts, take a second-year leap with Marcus Mariota at the helm? <laughs> no. That's kind of why I'm concerned here. But let's look at what, uh, real quick, what Mr. Mr. Matt Ryan did last year. He finished as the quarterback. Good Lord, where'd you go? Quarterback 19. Oh, man. Uh, 67%. That's fine. Uh, Threw for less, just under 4,000 yards with 30, with 3,968. Only 20 touchdowns, a little below his his norm. 12 interceptions. Again, not his usual thing. Uh, That came out to 13.1 fantasy points per game. So, not impressive, but we hated the offensive line. They really didn't have anything at running back. They had to piecemeal it together. Um, gosh, uh, receiver-wise, they had already lost Julio, and gosh, who was the guy? I mean, am I blanking? Calvin Josh? Ridley is yes, still, some, that, thank is you, still sorry. suspended. That's well, last lost. year, last year. So what what does this all mean for what what are you getting at with with uh yeah, with Calvin Ridley really wasn't there he he did not have a cast around him to do anything that he he has been known to do in the past yes and now getting, there's potential now there's potentially a rookie quarterback or a non starting NFL quarterback now exactly, as the starting quarterback exactly with Marcus I cannot, Mariota for the life of me envision an offense ran by Marcus Mariota in the NFL 2022. I just don't know if that's what they're going to end up doing. It might be Corral. So that was the last other thing I was going to mention. Do they turn to Corral? You mean Desmond Ritter. I'm sorry. Thank you. I always get those guys confused. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Um, I would bet you paychecks, but you don't get a paycheck. So <laughs> I'd have to give you one of my children and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> And I don't want one of your kids. I love your daughters, but man, I don't want to keep them. Oh, and this re- also sounds very highly illegal. <laughs> I know why I said Corral because Panthers are next. Um, can he keep Desmond Ritter at bay? I, I mean, I know Mar- Mariota is a great locker room guy. He can run, but no, 
Uh, so that's the th- situation I like to keep. He can run, on. but he can't fly. Yeah, exactly. I, I still think Pitts is uber talented, but no, I, I expect uh, you know m- not good stats next year. Uh, but let's keep. This is on the it. one thing that I, that's like I've seen some like obviously very early like pre-draft like rankings and everything, and Pitts is going like an ADP too, and like, Pitts is going like number three, and I'm like the third tight end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm like. Not number three overall, but I'm like, yeah, there's the third tight end off the board. I'm like, I don't get it, man. I don't really don't. I'm like, you could have Hawkinson show back up in the top five. You could have a um, who would you rather have? Schultz said, who would you rather have in redraft? Who would you rather draft? Pitts or Waller? Waller. Hmm. How about this? How about Pitts or Schultz or Pitts or Knox? I mean, I don't know, man. it's gonna be rough going in Atlanta. They're gonna be really. Bad I don't want team. Knox. I don't want Knox. Period. So I'd rather go with Pitts. So, okay. On to the Panthers. Uh, situation I'd like to keep an eye on there is: uh, Can Sam Darnold keep Matt Corral at bay, and will we ever see CMC produce elite level fantasy stats again? Yes, that's two things. I don't care. I'm doing it. Um, uh, so how just, do you break my rules? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not. Even, I'm not even gonna go over Darnold's stats. He was hot in the first. Two or three weeks, a lot of rushing going on there. Rushing touchdowns was booing his performance, and then the wheels fell off. Didn't he have a big old case of fumbleia at a certain point in the season? I think, yeah. But so they're they're saying all the right things. Matt Rule, the head coach, is you know, I mean, he's <laughs> he might lose his job after this year. I don't know, man. It's just <laughs> yeah, he's going to. It's not looking great. Um, and then, of course, going back to CMC, we touched it a little bit early with an article and some news we were talking about. I mean, he's just been so banged up. He's going to be put on the shelf for the better part of the off season in terms of playing. But, the but that the happened OTAs. the year before, but the year before last, and the year before last, but year the year before that as well. So, yeah. it was and just, I don't think they had. I, a, I brought it up. I brought it up in the news segment. It's more of like, if you hear about this. Don't worry about it because yeah. it's been happening anyways. Exactly. Um, and potentially to his detriment. So whatever. Yeah. If the offensive line can take a step forward, sure. But I don't see a running back of any uh, reputation whatsoever that could be a one two punch or, you know, Hubbard. Uh, Chuba, Chuba Hubbard is uh, the obvious guy. I don't think they brought anybody else in of note. So I think he's going to be the backup that you want. Uh, but he was very underwhelming also. So let's see what happens. Marlon Mack was, Marlon yeah. Mack was so poised to go there, and I just I don't understand why they didn't recruit him. But whatever. I mean, this is just going to be Buccaneers just six wins out of their division, easy. It's just it's it's pitiful. It's a pitiful division, in, in really almost the Bucks. blink of an eye. Like a couple years ago, Falcons were pretty darn good. On to the Saints. Uh, the situation I like to talk about here is who will Alvin Kamara's backup be because he's in a little bit of legal trouble. I don't have the number of games off the top of my head that I can speculate on how much he'll be suspended. Could be two, could be four, could be six. I have no idea. The guys that are behind them, uh, Mark Ingram is back. Um, but, I mean... John. Exactly. Old guy, old running back. Who really wants to look at that? Tony Jones Jr. was a whatever, a bit of a thing last year in terms of just like he's the guy, but he didn't do much. Uh, Dwayne, Washington, Dwayne Washington is there and Divine Ozig, Zigba. The guy I like. Ozigbo. Uh, Ozigbo. Oh, I see. I misspelled that. Great. Um, the guy Ozigbo. I like that, of course, I have a, you know, a, a horse in the race is uh, Abram Smith. Uh, Rookie, uh, drafted free agent, but among the highest guaranteed money we've ever seen a undrafted rookie free agent get. It was him and another name. Forgive me. I don't have that written down, but it, it was like uh, three in the 30,000 range or 300,000. Yeah. So a lot of guaranteed money for a guy that they matter. like. It's just. It does matter when you're looking at undrafted free agents, Josh. Oh, no, no, like yeah. his salary, but, you know, it's like... Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. His salary absolutely matters when it turn, to when you're talking about when you compare it to other undrafted rookie free agent running backs. They don't have anybody there. They like the guy. 
That's all I'm saying. So he's I the think, one. I think I they're like. gonna try. I think they're gonna try and run through the air like uh, they were doing in Detroit for the longest time. Yeah. With, and again, uh, again, Ingram's there. He's listed as the backup. He's probably gonna be the backup at the beginning of the season. But Abram Smith is got good I, size, I, good yeah. speed. Uh, he played a little bit of linebacker in school. Uh, had a really nice uh, uh, senior year to end. Well, I say senior. Really good last year at Baylor. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's all I really have cool. on the saints. That's the situation to keep an eye on there on to the Buccaneers to finish out the NFC South. Um, yeah, uh, basically Fournette is he going to be able to hold off Rashad white, uh, and at least perform similar to how he performed last year Fournette, that is, you know, me, I'm not a big Fournette guy. I think he had fresh legs last year. To that point, maybe they try to keep him fresh, and maybe you do see a little bit of Rashad White in the beginning of the season, and maybe Fournette does, again, hold on to that job. Uh, so that's the situation to keep on out with the Buccaneers. Obviously, the offensive pieces are all around the running back, whoever ends up being in the running back. You know, the go to quarterback, dump-offs are a thing. Um, now, uh, what is important to mention, Josh mentioned this off-air, is Fournette's the better pass blocker. In fact, Rashad White has been rumored to struggle with uh, pass blocking, so... That's a huge thing for a veteran uh, quarterback. That's a huge thing for a Super Bowl aspiring team. They will probably lean on the vet early. Let's see if he can hold on to that job. You got anything to add, Josh? Uh, in general, I mean, I mean, like, I guess, like the Saints thing with uh, I would, I would, I'd be like, eh, I'd, I'd want to kind of see how Jameis Winston is kind of meshing with those wide receivers, mm -hmm. and I mean, if he's Throwing errant passes in in uh you know preseason maybe that's Ooh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know being Jameis Winston that's the thing that to kind of maybe take up something into account and for. But, as a reminder, the know, defensive coordinator took the head coach job. So yeah. generally speaking, defensive coaches like to run the ball. Yeah, and, but but, but didn't their their didn't their quarterback coach like step up to be their offensive coordinator? Could be. I don't know. Anyways. Mm -hmm. Anyways, let's move along. We have we have one division left from each side, and it is the AFC best. I mean, West. Damn. Yeah, for real though. It might be really the NFC best. I mean, West. AFC. Um, I'm so confused. <laughs> no NFC, NFC best. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got what you're saying. Uh, but I mean, it's, we're going to start with Denver Broncos here, man. I mean, it's, if it's, if we're not talking about Javante Williams here, which we're not going to, because Ooh. I think, because I think it's really going to be Cortland Sutton versus Jerry Judy. And I think that's the, going to be the thing all off season that's going to be talked about. But Javante Williams is going to be coming in a close second. I just think that it's going to be that that who blends well more with Jerry Judy. Man, you got a, some burpees, some some little indigestion or something going on there. Sorry, um, I just think it's going to be more of like this, like the thing you're going to hear about throughout all the off season, especially especially we're kind of you know, in the quiet times of dynasty and everything. But I mean, it's going to be redraft. Jerry, Judy, Cortland Sutton, Jerry, Judy, Cortland Sutton, you know, who's mm -hmm. it going to be? Who's it going to be? And, and in their, in their careers, Jerry, Judy has 10 games played versus Cortland Sutton, 17. And they're Jerry, Judy has, about two thirds the amount of like yard, like receiving yards, about about maybe a two thirds or close to seventy five percent of of the receptions. No, no, t no receiving touchdowns. Zero receiving touchdowns for Jerry Judy in his career. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. And, and I'm really like, I, this is a guy that's sitting on my dynasty squad. Granted, I inherited the team, and I and I want Jerry Judy to succeed for very personal reasons. But it's it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be Cortland Sutton, but a new quarterback in town with Russell Wilson could easily flip that script, or it could be both, or it could be both, or it could be one of them one week and one of them the next. 
and it could just just be Cortland Sutton is DK Metcalf, and Jerry Judy is the. Uh, I don't even want to see Tyler Lockett because he's not as fast. But, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. Anyways, uh, let's move. Let's move. Let's let's uh, fast track to the Kansas City Chiefs here, and once again, it's the wide receiving core, and. It's it's mainly focused on who's the, gonna be who's gonna gonna be for the Patrick Mahomes man. I mean, perhaps it's gonna be nobody. I mean, there has like Pat Mahomes has come out and said that he wants to work on spreading the ball around. You know, the old find the guy that's open. You know, uh, the you know, remember when like Tom Brady so sort of, like kind of first couple of years or so oh, in for the, sure. in the yeah. cast NFL. It was receiver. just it was just like it was literally just like option routes and and here's this here's that you know like man maybe that's what the chief's gonna do with you know kelsey just kind of dominating the middle or whatever i don't i don't know man but that's the thing that i want to i want to focus on here like there's i could quote you on vacated targets by tyreek hill and blah 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 it doesn't really matter because i don't really think that anyone's really all that capable of stepping up to do so i don't think anybody's capable of replacing tyree kill at this point in his career it's just too too valuable piece stats out the window like he just takes the top off man he really puts a defense in a pickle yay for using the word pickle <laughs> <laughs> let's move along to las vegas raiders i had to look that up again because i thought it was the uh los angeles raiders it's so many loss and loss and whatever. Anyways, uh, thing to watch here is, is I think is going to be Devonte Adams and Darren Waller. And yeah. I, as I've as I've said in in previous to go off script a little bit here, but I've, as I've said in previous episodes, is that Hunter Renfro, which ended up being a really good steal for you in in fantasy football last year, if you got him, he was great. But him and Darren Waller only, only, in, uh, once again in, in half PPR leagues, they only um, uh, cross streams twice with over 20, 10 fantasy points each. Two weeks, two weeks out of last year, they ended up with more, both more than 10 fantasy points each. Can Josh McDaniels get Derek Carr to support a Devonta Adams and a Darren Waller? I'm wondering, I'm honestly wondering if they, if the Raiders and it's more of a, who's the newest one? Is it, um, it's not Al Davis. Who, who, what's his son's name? Oh, he put me in a spot. Al Davis. Uh, I don't remember. Al it's Jr. not Al Davis. Al Jr. It's not Al <laughs> Jr. It's like, it's like, it's not, we'll, 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 we'll call, we'll call him Keith Davis. Keith Davis. Um, like I, I wonder if they just they just spent so much equity, like contract wise and trade capital wise, to get Devonte Adams that they're just going to try and focus on Devonte Adams being the focal point of the of the offense, with Darren Waller being the wide receiver two slash tight end one. You yeah. know, no, I, yeah, that's probably how it shakes out. If I had to guess, um, let's let's uh, last last team last team just just for the sake of, I, I would love to have some epic segues and everything but uh <laughs> for the sake of, for the sake of expediency los angeles chargers got it right you did you uh, did mike and you got the raiders right didn't mike you? williams is the guy that i want to see this off season can he actually build on what he started on with last year if you chris if you don't remember he scored 100 and oh fish i have it written down it's like 108.3 fantasy points or it's 100.3 fantasy points but in the first five weeks but then he scored 208.6 fantasy points throughout the entire season so he, like in his first five weeks he scored 48 percent of his fantasy points wow. we'll just call it a half yeah yeah round it off it's actually a little bit more than 48 points, but, you know, 48%, but, you know, still. It's just like, so in five weeks of last year, he scored almost half of his fantasy points. Wow. 
Wow. And I yeah. and, and I even looked and like and I even looked at like the teams that he went up against. Some of them weren't very good teams as far as like secondary. Some of them were, and it was just kind of like, man, it was. Just, and he just kind of like didn't do much the rest of the year. I'm like, so that's why I'm like, can this guy actually build a rapport with Justin Herbert? Herbie, our our guy, our boy, mm-hmm. Justin Herbert, Herbie. Mm-hmm. Can he build a rapport with Herbie and actually become like a wide receiver one throughout an entire season? I I don't know if he can. Yeah. I don't. I just I just don't. Chris, I believe you have one more division left. Let's let's round out this very long episode. We <laughs> knew it was going to be long, but still. We did, we did. On to the NFC East. I've got first up, we've got the Cardinals here. Did and you just say the NFC East? Did you I? The NFC West. The NFC West. Um, Scratch that. The NFC On best. to. <laughs> what? I said scratch that. Let's let's try that again. On to the NFC West and the Arizona Best. Cardinals to begin with. Uh, we're going to look at their Worst. receivers situation because, Blah. yeah, well, I mean, I've got a little question to, to end things here that I, that I thought of just a second ago. Anyway, wide receivers. So Hopkins, uh, DeAndre Hopkins played 10 games, had 64 targets last year, like Josh just said. <laughs> you know, not impressive. Not what you want to see out of a, really, dude, a Hall of Fame all pro, you know, Cowper. I don't know if he fell off a cliff, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, so that's where I'm at. He's also uh, facing a six game suspension this upcoming season. Yeah. So. And, th- and there's a six game suspension suspension for PEDs. And there it's just, the cupboard is bare at receiver. As far as I'm concerned. I mean, I don't know if they expect to get something out of AJ Gr- green. Uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What about your boy? Rondell Moore. Uh, you know, I actually looked at something, and he had, he had a disappointing season. I was disappointed. I missed, uh, if, if we want to go and put it that way. But he did have 64 targets. I didn't think he had that many. That's not, that's not good, folks. Don't get me wrong. It's not good. But I was still kind of surprised to hear by that, about that. The more important number to mention is Christian Kirk, gone, with 103 targets. Uh, now, we all know they spread it around a ton Ah, oh, jeez, man. How many plays did they ran? They ran the eighth most plays with 1,126. You got to remember Kyler was that. out. Kyler was out for two games. That probably goes up a little bit because they run more. their... Yeah, they run their offense through him. You know, so there's that uh, part to it. Uh, Kyler still ended up the quarterback 10, though, with, you know, 21 and a half points per game. Um, you know, obviously that's per game, so... The missed games don't hurt that. Almost 70% completion. Only 24 touchdowns through the air. And really only five on the ground. That's not... I think we expect a little bit more uh, on the ground there. Um, I'm very high on Kyler. I just worry that he doesn't have the pieces around him. Yes, the defense is good. I feel like everything else is pretty good on offense except for these wide receivers. Now, can they hold... I don't have their schedule in front of me, but can they hold off and... Hold the, hold the hatchet down. That's not what that. Hold the hatches down until Hopkins gets back. Uh, they did re-up Ertz. Ertz is going to be a big part of this. That's probably the answer to the question. Is it's going to be a in, lot of brought Zach in Hollywood Ertz. as well? Yep. Oh yeah, of course. And they brought in Hollywood. So uh, the correlation there is, I definitely want to. I think Kyler Murray has one of the best arms in the league. He throws a deep ball almost effortlessly, even at you know. 5'8", or whatever he is. It's really impressive. So I think they saw something they liked in Hollywood. And there's a hole to fill with the six games come from Hawkins. So let's take a, you know, keep an eye on the Cardinals wide receiver situation in the offseason. On to the LA. On to the LA Rams and their running back situation. To give people some context here, Sonny Michelle had 208. He, he led the team. Well, oh, goodness. Something just crazy just happened. Oh. Uh, Sonny Michelle led the team with 208 carries, 845 yards, yep. four touchdowns. But he shined in the in the postseason, uh, so that's important to remember. Daryl Henderson, 149 it, it was, carries. It, was, it wasn't even a postseason. It was just kind of like kind of down the stretch for them. 
For sure, for sure. I thought there was a couple of really good playoff games for him, too. Maybe it was just okay. Henderson actually had the better average with 4.6 yards. Um, obviously, he got dinged up, too, got banged up. That's off 149 carries. Cam Akers was non-existent. And that was at the beginning of the season last Cam, year. Cam Akers blew his Achilles in. I just had it. It was October, I believe. Achilles, and it was... It wasn't even October. It was like July. You're right. What was I looking? It was at? right before. It was. It was like. It was like the beginning of August. Actually, it was like right before like fantasy drafts because like some, it was like, like Etienne and Acres. It was like Etienne and Acres because there was bam, team. because there was there was a big outcry of teams that had drafted Acres, and it was just like oh, and we and like the two of us we were just like and this is why you don't draft. This early, if you can avoid it, like, I mean, like PSA, if you can, if you, like Labor Day weekend is prime draft weekend, you know, mm-hmm. I know like everyone's going out of town for, you know, one last row or take the family, you know, last row around the summer and blah, blah, blah. But if you can put your, your fantasy draft and like in Labor Day weekend, that is the per- the perfect time to do it because it's literally right before the NFL season starts. You're never going to get any closer other than the day before the season starts or the day of the season starting. You know, yep. with that that first person yep. that game didn't Cam come back? You're for never the going Rams to get in the playoffs weekend. Didn't they have Cam for the playoffs? Eventually, they did, but he was not himself. No, nope, that's exactly why I brought it up. He was never himself. Um, we're still in that area where we're not sure if the Ach- Ach- Achilles. Uh, did I do it right that time? <laughs> if the Achilles, no, I, think eh. you, I think you. Meant <laughs> I don't know what my deal is with the word. I think it's just it's it's just stuck in my head. Anyway, um, it's a potato potato. Was that? You know, we're not sure if the Achilles is the next ACL. You know, that's just the simplest way to put it. We kind of need to wait and see. I think Mac came back pretty good. Marlon Mack came back pretty good from a from an Achilles, but you know, I think he also had. Get to see, he hasn't really played. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. If, yeah, so uh, the concern is obviously Cam Akers. It'll never be the same. Um, you know, and quite frankly, he had just emerged the prior season. Drink. He had just emerged the prior season to kind of take the reins. It's not like he had a season or two in, under his belt to be like, oh, he's our guy. And what they went through with Gurley a year or so before that, I don't think they're they're uh, married to any one running back. Whoever can go in there and produce, it could be Henderson again. So uh, let's move on from the Rams. That's the important situation to take a look at there on a very high-powered offense that we want a piece of. Who's going to be the running back? On to the Niners. I'm going to keep this one short. It's simple. Will will Trey Lance or will he not start? Um, If I had answered that question today, which I kind of do because this is a fantasy show about speculating in the offseason i'm gonna say it is trey lance there's no way they're sitting this kid again for an entire season i think he's i think they're gonna run the offense through him i think it's gonna be kaepernick-esque you know when they had him uh several years ago when he was just running and throwing and just just whipped green bay in the playoffs like just like everybody was really high on that dude's talent and and, and it was before we kind of realized this new era of uh, uh, running and throw, dual threat quarterbacks. Um, so I think they want to see what they've got. They spin up to get him the year before last. Um, I think he's going to start. I think the Sam, the 49ers are a team that does not throw the ball to running back anyway. So, you know, that whole running quarterback corollary that tends to not dump off. Uh, but a running quarterback tends to help the running back on the ground. Uh, pick your example. I I hate to go back to Washington that many years ago, but Robert Griffin and Alfred Morris, like, you know, that was a great tandem for a year or so. Uh, Sean McCoy and there you go. uh, Donovan Knapp. So much rudder, but sure. Yeah, we'll take that. Um, So yeah, uh, I think that's the situation to keep an eye on there. Who's that worked out at the very beginning in their career, right? Yeah, I think I just don't think McNabb was ever much of a runner. He was good. He was good early in his career. You're right. He was pretty good on the ground early in his career. You're right. Um, that's more or less it for the Niners. You know, we're not, but outside of Debo, uh, we're not in love with any, uh, outside of Debo and Kittle, we're not in love with any uh, pass catchers uh, and the Niners. I want to keep an eye on this quarterback As situation. Yet, but yeah. 
Yeah, and hey, maybe Debo takes a big hit with a second year Trey Lance running around all over the place. We'll see. On to the Seahawks. Just, I mean, it's really kind of two guys. It's the running back position. You mean the Seahawks? Seahawks. Yeah, exactly. Um, I did pick up uh, Drew Locke in the la- uh, my last pick of the of our little fan- uh, rookie draft, rookies and vets draft, because I needed a quarterback, and I think he's going to start, and that's the only reason I picked him up. Um, who knows? Who knows? But uh, as far as the running backs go, um, I think. Ken Walker, which I believe he got wants to go by Ken. Uh, Ken Walker is is better, uh, but don't forget Rashad Penny was a heck of a prospect coming out of Oregon, I believe. Um, San Diego State. Gosh darn it! I do that every time. There's another guy that's similar to Rashad Penny that I like to do that with. Anyway, San Diego State, Rashad Penny. You know, and he looked great last year. I just, again, kind of like the Rams. I don't think they're married to a guy at running back. I think Chris Carson, we don't even know if he's going to play again. You know, I love the player, hard runner, but I also think that hard running has is, is kind of cut his career short. Uh, he was cheap for the team to keep there. I think he's probably a foregone conclusion. I think it's down to Penny and Mr. I think Penn. the team wants Chris Carson to come back, and there's still a potential for it to happen but i'm not holding my breath i it's, think it's, it's, down it's, to it's, so, it's 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 a it's a feel-good story you know of mm-hmm. or a tragedy story of you know nfl career and, and i would kind of focus on walker kind of uh, you know the fact that he didn't catch the ball much in college but i do think he can do it however seattle really doesn't throw to the backs much and again they no, want to they run. They really don't. They do not. They do not. And they want to run the ball. And they probably want to run the ball and keep the ball out of Drew Locke's hands as much as they can. Still, still but they have a bad detriment, defense. They won't run the ball. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, you know, outside of obviously the receivers may take a hit with Drew Locke, I want to focus on this running back situation and who wins the job or at least takes, you know, 60% of it. And I think it'll eventually be Walker. But we might be looking at another Jonathan Taylor, Brees Hall, et cetera, situation where they start with the veteran at the beginning of the year, ease in the rookie. So we'll keep an eye on that situation in the NFC West for the Seahawks. For show, for show. And that is the thing that to keep your eye on. Um, we are Amazing Fantasy Football. I am Josh, and over there is the Chris to my Chris. Um <laughs> We're, I mean, we're we're gonna take a break here because it's yeah. We're coming up on June and it's gonna be quiet. Radio there's silence. Not a lot of there's it's just there's just not a lot of things to talk about in June. You know, like I, I literally read an article tonight we can, we can, where the guy was like, you know, I because Seattle or Denver, whoever it was, was like, well, it wasn't Denver because that wasn't my team. Was like, uh, we're gonna hit a period of radio silence here <laughs> in a minute in June. They're gonna be the teams just. Gonna I mean, be, we kind of already have other than that, like. David and Joko news and the rest of it was just kind of like it was just precautionary things of like well you know mm-hmm. Chris, CMC hasn't done preseason stuff and for like a couple of years anyways but so don't worry about it you know like that sort of thing anyways yep. we're amazing fantasy football please we'll, we're gonna we're gonna start streaming here in the off se- in the off season uh, but we're gonna be doing some mock drafts there as well and we're gonna be doing like recording things. So you can leave us a five star review, please. Mm-hmm. Leave us a five star review, um, on wherever you get your podcast, mm-hmm. uh, and then you can check out the streams or the or the recorded video content on YouTube if you're listening to us in podcast format. Um, Chris, do you have anything you want to say to anyone before we leave? Like, I... share, and subscribe. And you know what I have to say? Follow. Follow this guy on Twitter at Josh AFFB. Oh, right. Follow that guy over there. That would be Chris at Amazing Fantasy Seven. I actually do stuff on Twitter, not a lot, but I mean, right now I'm mainly commenting on you know like dynasty, like drafts and trades and whatever. But you know, so I would definitely like to ramp it up, especially as we get into training camp and regular season, in terms of both Twitter accounts, sharing and and commenting more. Caring. Interacting. <laughs> it's caring more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I I really I really enjoy sharing and caring. So yeah, you know yeah. 
Social media is a devil, but when you're just talking fantasy, and, and also if you follow me, you can see some you can see some adorable pictures of my dogs too. Oh, because nice! I, I, I didn't know I, you were doing stuff like that. Now I feel left out. Maybe I should. I did well. No, I I did like her graduation day from from training class right. and you know stuff like that. You know. Anyways, right. so we've been amazing fantasy football. There will be some stuff, some off season stuff. I'm hoping to try and do some player videos. That's if the app cooperates with it with me. Anyways, um, I'm, I'm I'm trying to trying. Don't quote me on it, but I'm trying. But we've been amazing fantasy football. We thank you all for tuning in. Leave us a leave us a a, a rating, a comment when, whenever possible, Chris. We'll be back in the mid, mid to end July, right? Sounds great to me. Love you all. Thanks for tuning in. Later. Bye-bye. Hey, um, everybody. I thought you were. I thought we were recording, and you were just going to. We are recording, but I did. Shit.